Daylight savings time is a really interesting concept, but where did this idea even come from? Well, we traveled all the way to Jefferson, Texas, to the Museum of Measurement and Time to find some of our answers. Wrist watches, pocket watches, uh, big clocks, little clocks, novelty clocks, funny clocks. That's Johnny Ingram, the timekeeper, clock collector, and owner of the Museum of Measurement and Time. While the museum opened in 2010, it's taken more than 60 years for Ingram to collect over 500 clocks. Well, there's a little black clock on the table over there, and that's the first clock that we bought. Bought it in, at Christmas in 1960, and I, I called him the culprit that started everything. During that time, Johnny and his wife, Edith, traveled to 48 of the 50 states to collect what is now housed in the museum. Some of these hands have been telling time for centuries. I've got a little display set in the back that's got three clocks in it. Represents a 300-year time period. Starts in 1500. Then another, there's another clock from 1600 and another one from 1700. When it comes to weather and the changing seasons, we use a lot of different measurement and time. Ingram knows all about it. It was actually created by the uh, Railroad Commission. Time zones, that is, which was the beginning of our modern day timekeeping. They, uh, when they began to travel, continental travel on the, the railroad system, they were having train wrecks because everybody was using a different set of time. The time zones did not exist. So what they did, they got together and established the three that we are recognizing today. And in many places in the United States, the change of seasons is often thought to coincide with daylight saving time. But that came a little later. They didn't put daylight saving time in it. That become about 1916 when the federal government adopted this, this time system, time zone system that the railroad set up. It was so popular that the government took it over and added daylight saving time because we were, at that period of time, we were fixing to get into World War I and they thought it would save electricity. While time change and the changing of seasons might not have a direct correlation, some clocks in Ingram's collection actually function based on changes in weather. It runs on barometric pressure and temperature and it varies through the day, it winds the clock. Remember, this is the Museum of Time and Measurement, meaning we were also able to find a few different tools that measure the weather. And it's also a good thing Ingram has a few clocks that are able to wind themselves. Otherwise, he wouldn't have the time to wind them all. I don't run but about 40 of the 500 clocks that we have, and uh, I keep none of them on time. Well, I keep one. I, I know where it's at but I don't share that with the visitors. Oh, really? I just let them look. <laughs> and we sure did take a look around. When we asked Ingram how much time it took to collect all this time. It took me the same length of time to collect these clocks as it did to grow this gray hair all my life. But regardless of all the history we were able to learn, one of the most valuable lessons Ingram left us with was this. Everybody values what they consider their time. And that's one way you measure it, is with a clock. Exciting times here in the CBS 19 Weather Center as a new weather pattern develops right before our eyes. Yes, the long range cycling weather pattern theory is happening right now and it is setting up between this first week of October and the second or third week of November. We are looking for key features in the atmosphere. For instance, see all this dry air coming into the Midwest? That's a key feature that could repeat in terms of a upper level ridge. We have ridges and troughs. Those are the key to our weather pattern. And this weather pattern again will emerge by mid November. It's unique. We've never seen this type of weather pattern before. When we look at the weather pattern, we're looking at the winds at about 18,000 feet or at the 500 millibar level. It's about halfway up through the atmosphere. These ridges and troughs that we identify will repeat within the cycle. For instance, as we head into the middle part of October, we see this anchor ridge. 
Not good news if you want wet, stormy and cooler weather. This would tell us some warm, dry days are ahead and will repeat. But there is a storm off the Pacific Northwest coast that will eventually move into the central plains. And so that's one of those key anchor troughs. But as we look into the middle part of October right now, it looks like temperatures are going to be above average. And when it comes to rainfall below average rainfall likely all the way into East Texas back through North Central Texas. So what about Halloween? We can use the long range weather pattern cycling theory to identify key holidays. So we know Halloween once we identify that pattern and right now early signs point toward a cool and dry evening for trick or treating 77 degrees under a partly cloudy sky election day high of 74 some scattered showers. If you're headed to vote in the morning, make sure you have a jacket, maybe an umbrella. Thanksgiving looks fantastic for those early morning football games, but a high temperature of 75 with partly to mostly cloudy conditions by the afternoon. And if we go all the way into late December and Christmas right now, the way the weather pattern is setting up showers on Christmas Day, but dry Christmas Eve and a high temperature of 61 degrees. So here's our fall forecast right now. It looks like and I showed you one of those anchor ridges with warmer than average weather. That means we could have a delayed freeze until early December, but we do see those storms coming in from the Pacific Northwest and that could happen three to four times. So we could have three to four severe weather and heavy rainfall setups. But overall, it looks like we'll have a warmer than average fall and a drier than average fall. Thanks for watching our forecast to check out more on the forecast. Go to CBS 19 TV.